Do you use alfalfa on your farm or do you graze your animals on alfalfa? Chances are you think you know a lot about it, but you probably miss out on a few important topics. Today, we're gonna to talk more about everyone's favorite feed, alfalfa. Tim from One Awesome Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. You know, we get lots and lots of questions about feed. And we get lots and lots of questions about different pastures and different hays as well. And today I want to take some time to talk to you about probably one of the most frequent questions that we get. And that is, tell me about alfalfa. Tell me a little bit more about it. You know, everybody raves about alfalfa and they say, well, it's so good and it contains so much protein. And so then it kind of begs the question of, well, then why doesn't everybody feed all alfalfa all the time. Now this video isn't to necessarily steer you towards feeding alfalfa or to steer you away from alfalfa. It's just to educate you. Chances are it may be right for you in a very specific way or in a very specific situation. So make sure that you watch the video all the way to the end because we're going to give you important tips and tricks throughout and considerations that you need to make. Now, when it comes to alfalfa on our farm, we run on open pasture about eight months out of the year. As a matter of fact, we are getting ready to put our animals back on dry lot for the winter. When we do our spring shearing in April, our animals come out. And when we do our fall shearing at late October, early November, they go back on to dry lot. And the reason for that is, is our ground that we have here and the very cold temperatures that we get here in Indiana, we get down to negative 20 at some points during the winter time. We get ice storms, we get snow things like that, our animals just don't do good on open pasture all year round. So what we do is we bring them up to dry lot during the winter months. So we kind of have a mixed situation on our farm, like most of you probably have on yours, where we're feeding on pasture some of the year, and then we're feeding hay the other time of the year. So some of our ground's going towards making hay bales, and some of our ground's just open pasture that we rotational graze on. On our open pastures, we have about a 20% alfalfa, 20% clover and about a 60% grass mix. For our baling, uh, our pastures tend to be a little bit higher in alfalfa and clover. So why would this be? Well, alfalfa has a lot of protein. It has very, very high protein. In most cases, fresh alfalfa out on fields, depending on the time of year, is going to be at or above 20% protein. Sometimes they can get as high as 22 to 24% protein. Once we bale alfalfa or we bale grass or clover or any of those things, and that hay is allowed to sit, some of that energy transforms and the protein actually drops a little bit. So what you have on pasture doesn't always necessarily equate to what you get in your hay. So what you will see sometimes in hay is that you have a little bit higher protein that's baled um, because we know that that protein is going to drop a little bit when the animal actually finally gets to eat it. So when we talk about protein, when it comes to alfalfa, especially out on pasture, the issue that we run into essentially is that it has too much protein. So too much protein can be a bad thing. That's why you don't see many people that are rotational grazing or grazing for that matter on pure alfalfa or pure clover for that matter. The main reason is it's just too darn much protein. And we've talked about this on Lanessa Farms Tack Box. If you haven't been there, check it out right here. It's our forum and group on Facebook. And we've talked about this and we've said that you know, too much protein causes a phenomenon where you actually get a uh, weight loss, you get body deconditioning, you get scours, you get other problems. The reason for that is, is that when you have too much protein that these animals are taking in, once we start going over about a 20% ratio, and that can be with grain, it can be with any kind of feed, but once you start exceeding about 20% protein, the problem becomes that it's getting too much protein for that animal to break down. When an animal takes in protein, that protein is split apart and broken down into its subsegments, which you know as amino acids, and then there's waste products that are developed. Those waste products are usually in the form of ammonia, and that ammonia and all these other byproducts get filtered out in the kidneys and then excreted from the body. Normally it's excreted through the urine. The problem is, is it can cause a lot of wear and tear on the kidneys. As a matter of fact, if you were to feed too high protein for too long, you can actually cause kidney damage and kidney failure. So 
that is the number one thing that we worry about with too much legumes in general. That can be clover, that can be bird's foot trefoil, that can be alfalfa. But again, today we're talking specifically about alfalfa. So that's why we like to keep that even spacing uh, or our even distribution out on our pasture where we've got lower protein grasses, then we've got that alfalfa that's high. And when you mix it all together, it puts you at a more uh, even level that's good for our animals that doesn't cause all of those nasty side effects. The second point that I wanna talk about regarding alfalfa is the same problem that we deal with with a lot of legumes, and that is bloat. Alfalfa is notorious for what we call frothy bloat. There are leaf proteins that are actually in alfalfa, and those leaf proteins are called sapacins. When these animals ingest that leaf, which is where all the proteins are, and they chew up those leaves and they get in their stomach, they can cause what we call frothy bloat. Those sapacins can cause a stable foam to form inside that animal's gut, and they are not able to burp. They're not able to belch out that gas that's made in the rumen. Eventually what that's gonna do is that's going to cause a lot of bloating. It's gonna cause a lot of distension. Uh, the animal's gonna be uncomfortable. They're gonna yell and holler and, and not feel good, and eventually it can kill them. Sometimes you'll see frothy bloat forming at the mouth. You'll see all this foam uh, forming at the mouth. Sometimes you won't see it at all. One of the major things that we worry about with alfalfa, especially fresh, lush alfalfa or wet alfalfa or alfalfa right after a heavy frost, is that you're gonna see instances of this frothy bloat. Now bloat is another topic that we're not necessarily gonna get into today, but it is something that I wanted to talk with you about. If you are enjoying the content that you're seeing today, please consider hitting the subscribe button and giving us a thumbs up. It's a great plant. And one of the main reasons that it's a great plant is it has a very, very deep taproot. That very, very deep taproot is able to help alfalfa withstand a lot of drought pressure that can be on it. But you'll notice that alfalfa has a rather coarse stem. Now these leaves, this is where all the good stuff is at in the alfalfa. The stem itself, most of the animals, goats tend to like to chew on it a little bit more than sheep do. But generally speaking, all that nutritional value that we wanna get at is actually in the leaves. You can get really good alfalfa hay and you can get really bad alfalfa hay. So when you're looking at your hay, we want you to concentrate more on the fact of what does that hay look like? Does it have a lot of leaves or is it almost all stem? I've seen some really garbage alfalfa hay out there throughout the years that the producer is selling it to you and saying, oh, it's alfalfa hay, but that's all stems. Your animals aren't gonna eat it. It's gonna be a complete waste. So you need to be cautious of that. There's a lot of science and a lot of finesse that goes into baling alfalfa properly. If it's dried out too long, if it's tetted too much, it'll actually cause the leaves to dry and drop off. And when they bale it, all you're gonna get is stem. So anytime you're checking out alfalfa hay, remember alfalfa hay is not created equally. You need to look at the quality of that hay and see how much leaf it actually has on it. The last thing that I wanna talk about, some misnomers that we hear a lot about. Now we get emails and we get video comments from people all over the world and all over the United States that say, I don't feed grain to my animals because grain is garbage or I don't believe in grain or I run an all natural farm and I do non GMO. Unfortunately, a lot a lot of these people are not truly educated on alfalfa. I'm going to give you three things that I want you to think about when it comes to alfalfa, especially if you're running a non-GMO or an all natural farm or a pesticide or chemical free farm. When we talk about genetically modified plants and plant foods, alfalfa in many, many cases, in fact, is genetically modified. When people think of Roundup, they think of Roundup ready corn, they think of Roundup ready beans, but a lot of people don't realize that there has been Roundup Ready alfalfa since 2005. If you ever drive past the field and it looks just absolutely beautiful with alfalfa, not a single weed in there, chances are you're seeing a Roundup Ready alfalfa field which has been sprayed with Roundup in order to keep the weeds from growing in there. Unfortunately, alfalfa is one of the most highly sprayed and chemically exposed feedstuffs in the United States that we give to sheep and goats. And the reason for that is, is a nasty little weevil that loves to get into alfalfa 
And unfortunately, the only way to protect the plant from getting attacked by this little booger is by spraying it with insecticide. Unfortunately, the chemical, the neuro agent that we spray on alfalfa, chlorpyrifos, is one of the most nasty chemicals that we know of. This was actually made by the Germans in World War II, and I will let you guess what they made it for. This causes neurological damage to the insects. It's been banned in almost every country in the modern world, with the exception of the United States. They tried to ban it a few years ago and things got a little heated and somehow they got around it. They said they were gonna get back to it and they haven't gotten back to it yet. Just know that it has been linked with brain damage, growth dysfunction, and all kinds of problems in both adults and children. So again, the chlorpyrifos is something that you're going to want to keep an eye out for. Lorsban is the trade name of the spray that they actually put on the plants. The last chemical is fungicide, and they tend to have to spray this with fungicide in order to fight leaf wilt and other problems. So the big three things that you need to worry about with your alfalfa, especially if you're an all natural or a non-GMO farm is, am I actually getting Roundup ready genetically modified alfalfa? Is this alfalfa being sprayed with neurological toxin agents, a fungicide? Those are very important questions that you have to ask your producer that's actually selling you the hay. Overall, in a nutshell, alfalfa, very, very good. Has lots and lots of protein. I think that as far as sheep and goats are concerned, it should be mixed in at about 50-50 ratio maybe a hair more for your hay. We don't like to exceed about 20 to 25% on pasture. Um, we think anything over that is gonna be a little bit too much protein. I know I covered a lot of topics during this video talking about the ill effects of too much protein, talking about bloat, talking about some of these chemicals, talking about hay and things like that. All of these questions you can find answers to on our website at www.lenessafarms.com. Make sure to check out our other videos and make sure to go to Lenessa Farms Tack Box on Facebook. This is our online group where you can ask questions and read other helpful articles. I'm Tim from Lanasa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining me again today, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.